Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Vikram Krana. Uh, this is my network and science applications project. The project is under Professor Dapeng Wu. Uh, the project title is Analysis of Transportation Network. In this project, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to discuss uh, brief about my project through this presentation and give you the demo of my codes. So let's jump into it, right? Okay. In the past few years, road transportation system has become highly complex and congested. The traffic congestion can be a serious problem that affects people both economically as well as mentally. Um, during a course of time, like we have different units to measure the distance, but like in the current era, we actually measure distance using time. Like from considering if you are going to point A to point B, we consider how long will it take rather than how much distance it is. In this project, I'm going to uh, I evaluate the different uh, routing algorithms on the basic basic routes that goes to the basic routes, and just let's move. Now, how we measure the transportation network, how we analyze it. There are four ways actually. Like first is the connectivity of networks. Connectivity of networks can be defined as the link between the nodes with their degree of completeness. And the other way is centrality. Centrality is the network is identified through the most important vertices in the graph. Now there is spread and diameter. Spread and diameter can be as the longest calculated short path available between the two points. And the last is the detour, like how many alternative routes, how much time it's going to take through that alternative routes. Those are all the factors that helps in analyzing the transportation network. So our main focus on this project is like the different shortest path algorithms and like the basics one, like the Bellman Ford, Dijkstra, and how to cover all the all the transportation network through graph purpose probably uh, through minimum spanning tree. And we, then I'm going to compare the Dijkstra algorithm with the Bellman Ford on the basis of time evaluation for the different number of nodes. So there is a lot of work being done on this particular stream. Like many approaches have been taken as transportation network is considered as a graph and different traversal algorithms are devised to calculate the shortest path. Uh, in, in 2012, uh, uh, Kai Gunter modified the same algorithm and used the concept of heuristic by which he could determine the order of selected nodes and uh, search process. While in 2013, Ma Marius compared the efficiency of different shortest path algorithms. He compared actually 14 algorithms based on different types of uh, single source and multi source. Now, how we represent a transportation network? Because we are going to use the computer and computers cannot understand the transportation network. So, we consider a transportation network as a form of graph. Now, a map can easily be expressed in a graphical format where cities represent the node, or we call them the vertex of the graph. And the connectivity can be expressed as the edge, and the distance between them can be say, said as the weight of the graph of, of the edge. Like we represent the network in the form of edges and symmetries, like in, you can see in the diagram here. Here is a like a brief example of like a graphical representation of different cities being the nodes, and the distance between in miles as the distance between the two nodes. Now we jump into the minimum spanning tree. Okay, the purpose of a minimum spanning tree is to get the graph connected all across the minimum distance cover, which therefore helps in calculating the shortest distance. It forms a, or provides a network within a graph through which all the nodes are covered. In graph, there can be like n numbers of spanning tree, but there is only one minimum spanning tree actually. Like, uh, if we consider this, this is the minimum spanning tree. Like from uh, it starts from Seattle to San Francisco, San Francisco to Los Angeles, then to Las Vegas, then to Denver, and which covers them, Minneapolis and Dallas, Chicago, Washington DC, and so on. 
there are two ways to calculate the minimum spanning tree. Uh, there are two approaches that are the Kruskal algorithm and the Prims algorithm. Uh, they both work on a different format, but they give the same result actually. Now we jump into the short, calculating the shortest path between source and destination. Minimum spanning tree doesn't work on the single source problem. Dijkstra algorithm is the basic of that. Dijkstra algorithm is based on breadth first traversal, uh, traversal for the graph. It's used to find the shortest path, as we know. The time complexity of Dijkstra algorithms with nodes n and total weights of edges e can be displayed in the form of function of edges and vertices where the total complexity of the running time can be said approximately to O of V square. Um, but if you use a Fibonacci heap in this particular format for Dijkstra algorithm, it can be achieved in O of V log, log V actually. That's pretty good. Now this is the representation of the same graphical format and, and to give the output as a, of the Dijkstra algorithm where the source is the Seattle actually in this particular case. Now here is the pseudocode of the Dijkstra algorithm. Uh, moving on. Now we come to the Bellman Ford algorithm. The Bellman Ford algorithm also finds the shortest path from the source to all the other vertices in the graph. But in Bellman Ford algorithm, the weight of the edges can also be negative. The algorithm is implemented in a manner that is, it is very interactive as it approaches is taken as to taking a bad estimate from the start and thus in, is improved on, as the code runs and further the shortest distance is evaluated. As we traverse the whole graph, that distance becomes small. The time complexity of this particular approach is a bit uh, bigger than the Dijkstra algorithm as it is O of V of edges because edges can be um, more than the vertices so that gives a bit of high complexity than the Dijkstra algorithm but it's still pretty good comparing to at least the Floyd Washer algorithms like the pseudocode of this is in the graph in the pseudocode we can see like we said like uh, highest of dv is as infinity we start with the highest possible shortest distance and then we reduce as we compare and tra traverse through all the graphs Now, considering the data set for this, uh, for this project, we are using two different sources of data, actually. For low amount of data we use, we are using the Karate Club data, that, which was, which consists of 20, 34 nodes and it is weighted, weighted edges. For big amount of data, we have taken a transportation network of Rome, actually. This graph comprises of 5,000 nodes and, and some a million weighted edges, actually. We process the huge data set from the text file and a code reads them and convert it in form of agency metrics on which a shortest path algorithms are run. See, the basic approach for this uh, project is like first we process the data set, then our Java programs run the algorithm mentioned and evaluation and analysis are done. Now I will give you a demo of my code uh, considering the minimum spanning tree here I have uh, prepared in a code of a reference for the Kruskal algorithm, it runs for the minimum spanning tree of this one. This is our data set actually on which the algorithm will be working on. This is the highest data set I have, which is of 5000 nodes and um, around million edges. So we run the minimum spanning tree now. This gives the minimum spanning tree in the form on the command line output. Let me adjust the screen for you guys. All the edges are like covered and giving the minimum spanning tree how many nodes are needed to travel through all this particular thing. Now considering the Dijkstra algorithm, it runs on again on the same data set. Default we have set the data uh, source to be the minimum is the edge uh, node number zero and the highest destination to be the highest node that is the 4999 so considering the data set this is the output we receive there are like 
14 is the cost of reaching the shortest path and from destination it goes to 4832 and 1891 2767 942 4964 1927 and then to the destination that is 4999 now we consider the bellman ford algorithm the dijkstra algorithm was implemented by me actually uh, i used the reference for the bellman ford as well as for the minimum spanning tree running the same code for Bellman Ford. Here it is. Like for the source, again, see the, this value matches with the Dijkstra algorithm. So that means up, up, both the codes are producing the same result, but a different time complexity is always on the floor, actually. So now, going back to the presentation. Now, the results comparison. The Karate Club data of 34 nodes, Dijkstra algorithm and Belmont Ford were almost equally equal because it was a very small data set. Then we increased our data set by like 100, 500,000 and, and the rift between the Dijkstra and Belmont Ford started increasing actually. So for the highest data set we had for 5,000 nodes, Dijkstra algorithm only took 3.4 seconds and but the Bellman Ford took 3.78, that is almost 3.8. So we can see in the graph there is a rift between the two. So as we keep on increasing, Dijkstra algorithm is much more faster than Bellman Ford. Now, the following analysis shows that for routing algorithm in transportation networks, as the number of node increases, Dijkstra algorithm is much faster than the Bellman Ford. The advantage of Bellman Ford algorithm is that it can work on negative weights. But in real world scenario, there is no negative weight between source and destination as distance cannot be negative. It must be remembered, however, that if there is a negative cycle, there is no shortest path. On the other hand, the minimum spanning tree helps in analyzing the minimum way of covering all the transportation network. So that's it, guys. This was my project. Uh, thank you, everyone.